Hello, Matthew Southgate here with another video, this time on running through uh, a quick test. A particular test is one that uh, some students have done. Okay, let's pulling that up now. Right, this involved this particular text. So, they would have been provided with a fully running CoffeeNet project, um, but I'm going to create that within this video. And it's going to check the understanding of the hardware and software configuration using Somatic Manager. Okay, the hardware we are going to be using is here. Make that a bit bigger. And that there is a Somatic S7 300 series. Uh, you just see here, here is the 314C. Dash to PNDP. Then we have the inbuilt I/O for digital input and analog input and output, and digital input and output, and a simulation module which is represented by a SM3323 module. Okay. Sliding over, we have a switch which will connect up and to unconfigured more electronics devices. Okay, let's do the wiring first. So, one end is already in the PLC. Connect the other end to the switch. And simply connect the switch to the PC, your engineering station and also to one of the devices. So one, two, connection to the switch for the engineering station. And finally plugging that in to here. I'm going to pull that off for the. Hello. I'm not expecting her. Sorry. Okay. Bit of an interruption with somebody visiting the room. Oh. Now I'm going to create the Somatic Manager project for this setup. After I've configured the network so that we have a static IP address using TCP version 4, 192.168. Dot one dot two fifty seems to be a number of favoring is outside of the range normally used. No gateway, no worries about DNS. Here we go. Okay. Running that Pronata just to check there aren't going to be any conflicts and discover the IP addresses for the devices on the network. Okay, and then we have a network. We have the PLC, the switch, and a previous uh, device. Now we could just re reset the network parameters. Yes. And that device will now reset. Okay, there we have it. We are going to give it its name. Now, according to the script, I need to be given it test surname.mer. So, 
so test dot southgate or type dot mer. Now remembering that the profi net name is important, the IP address is less important for slaves, but it is important for the PLC. Okay. Look a little bit neater. Starts topographical. There we go. This device has not yet run up, but will be fine in a minute. Okay. So let's minimise that. Run up Semantic Manager. Create a new project. Demo test. Right, within this we are going to insert PLC 300 series. We'll click hardware to configure that. Now then, remember that everything starts with a backplate, so we'll stick a rail in there and we'll stick in a power supply. Ours is the PS3075 uh, amp followed by the CPU I'll just drag this over so you can see what's going on maybe zoom in a little bit it's the 314C 2PM here we go, drill down double click and it goes. Ensure that you add an Ethernet um, connection to it, otherwise, you won't be able to connect to it. By clicking new, there we go, the default was fine, and the IP address is 11. I'll just quickly check that. So, yeah, PNIO, PN IO, that's 1.11. Okay. Need this up, press F4. Okay. Update the device name. The address is correct. There we go. Now, because the uh, device already has these built in. We want to access the simulated I.O. and that's under SM300. Digital input and output and we want to be using 8 digital in, 8 digital out and this part here will be fine. Drag and drop. Okay, there we go. Now, you'll see that within the input address range, we have what an output address range. These are independent, and they're both zero byte. Okay. We can't, don't currently have any more devices, and we need to configure. Uh, let's, let's configure the mode device now. Okay, so that's going to be Profinet IO. Additional gateway devices because it's not a Siemens device. Impact 20 version 1. Now we have across the 8 input, 8 output version. So I drag and drop that onto the network. Okay. Give the device its name, which is test.southgate.mer. The IP address really doesn't matter. It's currently configured there for 12. There we go. Now, because we've got this device highlighted, we will see that the inputs are at address, because there are eight of them, single byte address 1 and the outputs address byte 1 as well. Ok, 
Okay, now we need to add a program. So the simulated inputs and outputs of the PLC, at address zero, and the inputs and outputs of the Moore Electronics device are at address one. Okay, next in hardware config, we'll actually we'll save this, save compile, and download this configuration. And before we do that, uh, back again we go. Zooming out, oop, wrong way. You will see there's a bus fault light. And that's due to the configuration that's in there. The PLC is at address 11. Check. And we wait. That's my mistake. The IP address was incorrect. Now, check so we're going to stop it for loading. Yes. And I'll drag this across now so you can see what's going on. Okay. And the bus fault light has gone out because the system's now properly configured. Excellent. Okay, what we're going to do now is to create a quick program. Check configurations all working within the CPU program. Organizational blocks. Uh, let's delete any existing OBs in here. Which should be go online, cleanse, delete any existing OBs. Okay. Gotcha. Go about offline mode. Okay. Create a new OB. Go for OB one. Use ladder logic. Go to OB1. Okay, bit logic. Let's have a switch and an output. Switch is going to be uh, input 0, 0. It's going to be using the simulation model and the output is 0, 0. Run that. So now when I flip the switch for the inputs, right, I get an error. I've got a bus fault. Impact 20 apparently has. Okay, all the devices are working. Okay, let's check that we're working in the zero range.
Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Save, download. Yes, I want to overwrite. Save and compile, download. And we go back to having no, no bus fault. SF configuration file. Okay, let's try the program now. And there we have it. Okay, so there's definitely a configuration issue. So going back into here, we can re add the impact 20. Test dot south gate. Save and upload. Yes. Want to restart the module. Give it a short spell. The system's uploaded. So the Mo Electronics device is there. Okay, let's remodify our program. We give it a branch with an extra output. Output and we'll direct that to the first output of the mobile electronic device. So here you have the device. I'm going to have to upload it in a minute. So that still behaves. Moving across. And flicking the switch, you can see the remote I.O. turning on and off. Okay? So we've got comms working. What however, the sheet asks for developing a ladder diagram program, a ladder diagram language using OB1 when the switch is on, which we can use 
the current switch, or we can use another switch. Two light LEDs alternating in half a second. When the switch is off, the LEDs are off too. Okay. So effectively, we have a Create a new network. Actually, new network. Okay, that new network is going to use a switch to control two LEDs. Okay, branched. They're going to be okay. That's that. There. They're going to be alternating, so we can either do this manually with a switch, turn that on and off, but to be more accurate, we should use a clock. So we'll have a also put a switch in there for a clock. Okay, so both of these need to be high for an output to occur here. But because we want, let's just do that, shall we? Okay, the sheet asks for the switch particular switches to be used. So group number. So currently I'm using switch the bit input zero, the least significant bit. So say I was group one. That's what I use now. If I was group one, then input using the simulated block switch one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to need to create configure the devices uh, using the MER. Uh, and the sheet says using the two MER remote IO outputs, LED X and X1 plus 1, i.e., LED 1 and 2 for group 1. Okay. In this instance, I'd say group 3. So we're going to illuminate LED 3 and LED 4. So not O, Q is for output, 0 0.3, Q 0 0.4, directly access, and I'm using, using symbols here. Uh, I'll temporarily delete this and I'll upload, and I'll get include the clocking in a minute. Okay, so now I'm going to flick the first switch which was our original program. Actually, what I am going to do is watch, put the glasses on. And show you. Okay, so you can see the state. And switch one. I've made a silly mistake. I'm illuminating not the LEDs on the Mer Electronics device, I'm actually illuminating them on the PLC simulated module. One. It is really this simple. Once you've had your devices actually added to a project, changing where they appear, it's just a matter of changing the address. So here we have switch one turning on LEDs three. And four. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay, put that switch. So you can start to see. Let me get a pen because my finger's a bit too big for this. And what have I got in my pocket? No, that's too big a pen. Anyway, we have three over here. And four. It's actually over here. I 
Okay. Now then, to adjust the clocking, we need to go back into hardware configuration. PNIO, not the PNIO, the CPU, clock cycle memory, enable that. Okay. So for memory byte zero. Now that's a particularly special byte, and we will save and download that to the module. Yes. All good. Now we're going to add that logic to our project. So to address memory um, locations, M0, because that's the byte that we chose. Hi, Shu! Hi. Uh, we're going to address 5. That's just going to give us the speed of update that we want. Okay. Save, download, and update. Okay, stop that. Okay, yes, and clicking the switch on gives us nothing. I was expecting those LEDs to turn back on. Perhaps it was because I had the spectacles and the monitoring mats. Okay. Recompile. Re download to module. Yes, I want to completely restart. And here we have looking over the two LEDs are turning on, but both at the same time. So what we want is to, for them to alternate. So going back into the program, simple case of dragging a knot to invert the logic from this branch here and download. Yes, I do want to update. And here we see the two LEDs alternating. And when I flip the switch, it stops. Okay. Okay. Right. Close that now. The next part is to do a device replacement. So, to enable to do, us to do that, I'm going to use Pranata and I'm going to directly connect the PC to the spare device. I've just now connected the blue cable going from the engineering station from the disconnect that from the switch and connect that to the impact twenty. program on the PLC is still running. I'm going to update there. Here we have another device. We don't need to name that to Southgate. And as soon as that is kicked in, then the PLC will recognize the device when I reconnect it. So reconnecting to the switch and transferring the connection 
So that device, flicking the switch, switch one, then I'm going to expect the PLC to catch up. and start turning on the lights. Okay, so flicking the switch off. There, turn, disables the functionality, turning it on, does. So, I swap back. Ooh. Now I'm currently using the PLC uh, switch to go from stop and run load. Now, that's an indication that my OB85 and 86 are not set up properly. They're to do with local and remote disconnection. Thank you. Okay, so OB85. Now these OBs do not need to be uh, have anything in them to work. Download those. Okay. Go into the hardware settings and we will configure this to do the interrupts. Now those interrupts are here. Only thing coming out going out is. Okay. So if we compile and download to the PLC. Yes, I can want it to completely restart. So bring it back up the view. You can see that device. Swap. And as soon as the PLC is resolved, that it swaps over and uses the other device. Good. Okay. So that is an example of manual device replacement. What we next have in the sheet. Is the set the update time of devices. Okay. So to do that, oh wait. Double click on the bus. Update time is there. To change the update time, then double click. It's currently two milliseconds. We're going to go for a fixed update time, and you can choose a value that of your desire: 64, 128, 256, 256. Okay, that is what it takes to change the update time. Okay. Next part is to do with. For the program developed, which we did earlier, what is the scan time for the program? Okay, the scan time for the program is relating to go away, the device. Now then, within the CPU, if we go into online mode, then we will be able to access this. So within the CPU, because we're looking at, going to be looking at OB1, the scan cycle time. So the scan cycle time for OB1, which is the only OB running, fully running. Now, the longest it's ever run, because this can be variable based on lengths and logic, is 
two milliseconds. Okay, I always click update to get a, update that, but this program is relatively deterministic. It is deterministic. Okay. Now we've set the device update time, we've set the scan time. The device update time is fixed. The PLC's program scan time it can be fixed, it can vary based on what the program is. But this for this very simple program, it's also fixed. And the scan time is much shorter in relation to the device update time. Right, that concludes this video. Um, if you have any questions, get in touch. Bye.